Right. Michael, thanks so much for this opportunity to talk to you. Um, I really must say that, that your work on LED systems goes back a long way with me. Like um, I was a long haired hippie in a VW van driving, driving across Europe, visiting eco communities when I first read about your work. So um, this, is, this is a long time ago. Um, but I feel like right now, and that's, that's why I'm so glad that we had this opportunity to talk today. Um, we are already seeing in the, in the wake of COVID-19 and the cascading synchronous failure that is now rippling across the globe. Um, we're seeing supply lines fail. We're seeing yeah. that local communities, like how brittle that, that global economy was or is. Um, how supply, like just-in-time production on the other side of the globe basically leaves you extremely vulnerable to any kind of disruption. And this is what's happening all over. And um, at the same time, over the last 10 years, lots of organizations have started to home in on the bioregional scale being the scale where we can actually rematch the human impact and presence on Earth in a way that we are less of a degenerative and more of a regenerative species. And whether we're lucky enough that this global monster of, of a degenerative economy um, actually has another 10 years, so we have a bit of a softer preparation of what's coming, there are more pandemics and more climate change disruption on the way. In any case, we need to prepare the kind of regional exchange systems that you have been working with for what, 40 years by now, or 30 at least? Oh, 38 and a half, I think. <laughs> okay, I almost got it. So I, I would love to just, just basically quietly listen to your wisdom of, of what you would suggest um, people can do. And, and if you want, we've just talked a little bit privately on my, on my project in Mallorca. If you want to make it concrete, yep. use the word Mallorca, but, but you can talk about in general. I think what, what you're offering is something that communities everywhere could really learn from. So um, over to you. Well, thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. A generous um, and accurate summary of much of my long history and the hippies traveling around the world on VW buses and the like. But we've all grown up a lot um, in the last decades, particularly the last few years. And these days I'm focusing particularly on um, biomimicry, circularity, and responsibility, accountability. Yeah, the island th thing, for instance, you know, uh, at the beginning of my exploration of all these issues, I was coming across the, what is the island economy? What is the comparative advantage of get your stuff from out there, export the other, you know, import, export from the island. And it's very uh, dangerous stuff. You start importing stuff from other parts of the world without the slightest idea of how it was made, what it was made from, uh, what the consequences of the process, how many intermediaries were involved in this, that, and the other. And we also export without the slightest idea of what we're doing with our basic resources, our futures, our histories, or whatever. And in a way, an island and an archipelago should be responsible for what it puts out in the world and what it takes in from the world. So increasingly we've got this, what is our self-reliance? It's not about self-isolation. It's not like our island, nothing else out there. No, it's about responsible contribution, input, output. Does it balance? Are we sending people stuff they need? Are we responding to them in a useful way that builds the common wealth of the archipelago, the whole? Or is it just the idiot event, you know? Uh, idiot in the, the sort of Greek sense of the self-interested in comparison to the citizenship. Right? The idiot is, is perfectly reasonable. I'm looking after it, me, myself, my family, my business, my tribe, my, my territorial thing, the nation state. You know? <laughs> La France, c'est moi. Hey. <laughs> um, whereas a citizen behavior is the same person whose activities somehow relate to the whole of the agencies of their space. Right? And then there's this whole circular economy stuff. 
Um, here I'm, you know, referring to Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Brilliant work, yeah. terrific stuff. It's oversold, heavily oversold. Heavily, heavily oversold and under under considered, under critical. Um, but hell, they've got a lot of attention. They've got a lot of support. Where's the circularity? They're circulating materials. Yeah. What about circulating money? Is it not a recognizable process that when I buy a hat from you, you give me the hat and I give you the money? So the two things go in different directions. And in fact, as regards our economic engine, if money moves and stuff goes, we've got a patterning between the money and the stuff. So if the money can go those places, well, the goods went those places too, right? You know, transfers. The alien who looks at us from the upper stratosphere sees people moving and doing things. But if they had a monetary model, they'd see the same pattern of money moving and doing things in the opposite direction. The two are bang, one on top of the other. This is, this is really interesting because it, it also like in terms of re-regionalizing and relocalizing. like the, what I, my, my big um, critique of the Alan MacArthur Foundation's work on um, circular economy, as much as I really appreciate that they have pushed it hugely and I'm, I'm not wanting to be negative about them, <coughs> is the, the thing that there's an oversell that comes from Big Bill McDonough's days of, of cradle to cradle of this notion of upcycling. Uh -huh. It's physically impossible um, to 100% recycle most of the minerals that we build our technology out of. And, and, and you, you would need free energy to do so anyway. And, 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 and <laughs> no such thing as free energy, my friends. <laughs> like free love, it always costs me in the long run, as I recall. <laughs> and, and so ba basically you, you end up with um, running the system down just over a longer period of time. That's one thing. And, and the other thing is that while they drew so much from the early industrial ecologists, they actually, if you look at the kind of early Ayers and, and these guys, um, they pointed out that the most efficient cycle is the shortest cycle, the local cycle. Yeah. And that you, that you mustn't get into the game of the longer cycles if you can ever avoid it. And that's, I, I'm just sensing that that's a lead into um, also the, the money and community empowerment conversation. Well, it is. I mean, money is the social medium. I mean, we, we talk about Twitter or Facebook or whatever, or, or the internet connecting and disconnecting us, whatever. But look at the event patterns that are determined by the social medium called money and how it, in my view, has colonized our communities. Basically, you come in with the guns and the flags and the germs, and that gives you territorial advantage, and then you nail it down with the money because that gives you trading control. So the money becomes the import-export carrier. You know, you take um, Michael Hudson's analysis of the banking system as a perfect parasite. It infects you without you noticing. It takes over your major processes and eventually convinces your brain that it's an essential part of the entire system, that it is the host and you are privileged to be taking part in it. Well, the banking system has done that to us. And we believe money as though money is a thing that is not within our control, our grasp, our choice, our autonomous um, development. And ultimately, circular money, for money to be circular to me, means that I have to be the issuer of the promise that circulates within that network of people who believe any sense of that and returns for me to service. Any money which is merely um, a coin or a token or a bank issued tax credit or whatever is not my money. If I have that in my bank, it's their money in my bank. Actually, it's their money in their bank, right? Yeah. Anything I see on my screen about my bank balance is my score in their casino, where they make the rules and they take a cut of just everything that moves by. That's where your Margaret Kennedy and Declan very strong on the, the banking system as a, an overall drag on the interest structures or whatever. But it's not just the interest. In fact, the interest is only symptomatic. It's the scarcity. And a token that I hold because I need it, and when I spend it, it's gone. And that's the characteristic of their money. When you spend it, it's gone. Say goodbye. So 
their money ain't your money and it's gone. Your money is your promise, which is a relationship deal within the others in your network. And as you make a promise, it causes turbulence in that cloud of behavior. And then somebody wants to hire you because the money is in your loop. And of course, the smaller the loops, the tighter the reference and reciprocity. Also the limited variety. There may not be a neurosurgeon in your street. Yeah. Right. This is the classic uh, critique when when people mention lead systems. There's always well, there's, there's the aromatherapist and the massage therapist, <sighs> but the plumber isn't there. I mean, how often have no. you heard exactly that sentence about leads? But it's but, bread and beer. If you don't have bread and you don't have beer, you don't have anything. And metaphorically, I don't mean everybody could become mm -hmm. a raving alcoholic. It's just that there has to be bread and circuses. People have to be entertained and satisfied. But needs have to be met. So have, it's got to be supermarkets and cafes. Have, have you found, or have you, what is the minimal viable size of a system like that at a sort of community regional scale in terms of the requisite variety of like, I don't know if, if there is, if it's just numbers correlating to the diversity in general, or whether you could say sometimes you have very diverse networks with fewer people. Um, do you know anything about that? We used to think that the minimum scale was about 50 small businesses mm -hmm. that would provide enough confidence of intertrading between the businesses for them to open the trading model through um, to the general public, mm -hmm. who are both their customers and their staff. So if you have 50 businesses with the staff of 50 business being the customers of 49, you know, et cetera. You've got a cross relationship between all the, the businesses and all the people, you know, two different class groups. To make it work effectively, we went through the third party, which was the charities. Mm -hmm. Because people don't trust business and business doesn't trust people. So we have this model of the businesses issue money to the charities, community groups, confer service upon them. And then Joe Public buys the money, actually changes money with the charity. So I put hard cash into the charity and I get a dollar I can spend in my favorite restaurant, charity, business, whatever, you know, the issuers of the money. It's like, I don't know if you know the Rotary Club auction model. All the businesses put up things, then we have a party and we all bid on those things and the cash goes to the beneficiary of the charity and I get whatever it was. Well, that's a standard model for pumping uh, revenue into a beneficiary and leaving the beneficiary unentailed. This is a very important part of that loop is that it, the beneficiary doesn't owe the business that donated to it or the person who changed it into cash flow for them. Mm -hmm. Beneficiary is off the hook. That's a concept we call co-vestment and it comes in later. Don't lose it, co-vestment. It's not investment, it's co-vestment because it's two, two entities reconciling in their mutual support of something so that it's off and flying and they're in a loop. It's the creation of the loop that's the critical thing. It takes me to the Isle of Guernsey. Do you remember the Isle of Guernsey? I know where it is roughly on the map, but I don't know it's, much about it. You can basically throw a stone to France in the Normandy region. And in the 1820s, because it was technically English, it was a bit of a problem for the French and vice versa. So they weren't getting much business and life was tough on Guernsey. And they decided in some respect to build a, a stock house on the dock. Uh, you know, they needed a place to shelter the travelers coming in and out, all this other. So they invested in building the stock house, but ran out of money halfway through it in a crazy fit of genius. They created stock certificates paid the continuing work on the project in those certificates. So the job got done, the people got paid, and the certificates circulated for the next 60 years as an economic engine in the community. Wow. Now that was the Guernsey money. Um, it, it was beautiful. I mean, the stock house was good. It did shelter. It was an infrastructure event that was real and significant. But there was far more significance in these pieces of paper which by their circulation must have created many, many times the value. And we, when I lived at Findhorn, um, the local sort of 
it's not quite a community bank. It's, it's um, I guess it's a co-op. Um, Ecopia issued the local currency and people could invest into the local community owned wind farm through that currency. And then that currency yeah. circulated in the local community yeah. and, and being a place where, because it actually was printed um, currency, mm -hmm. you know, we also always had this added effect that about every year, about 2000 pounds worth of it would go as memorabilia for tourists. I've been to Findhorn and this is one of their, their notes. And, and, and it actually made extra money. Eh? Okay, I know, it's just like Disney dollars. It's, they walk off with the money, leave you with the trinkets. It's a souvenir thing. But taking that model down to its nuts and bolts, mm -hmm. consider a local Patreon mm -hmm. where you had a local res resource board of projects that needed support, mm -hmm. wind farms, um, music students, uh, a seniors resort or whatever. Now, you have a series of possibilities which are already invested by local businesses with credits. And then when you put cash into this thing, you get the credits so you can go shopping with them. Right? So you don't lose anything by supporting uh, the local musician or the um, de venture development or the whatever. Because although you've parted with hard end cash, which you need, you get credits which you can then spend and create the circulation. Now, that's the core of this concept we call uh, co vestment and use it to legitimize businesses. Now, the curious thing in, in these currency systems is that you and I as human beings are entitled to issue promises because we're real people and we exist. Businesses, however, are zombies. They have no presence, no character. They live entirely on one feedstock. It's called money. They don't need air. They don't need, they don't need a damn thing if the money is flowing. So they tend to have a fairly particular attitude towards money, which is they want it and they want to be real careful about how much of it you have. So they tend to be pretty tight with the customers and pretty tight with their staff too, because both of them are drains from the you know, retained earnings of the business. So if you want to start a currency, what you have to do is find out that the customers and the staff of a given business like the idea of participating in these circulatory loops that support the development of Commonwealth. And we've got it in our, our community with this, um, this fiver, which is a $5 bill um, and a QR code on the back that references what it's all about. And you get this in our local pub by going to the jar on the counter, which has a notice on it that says, we're supporting the Fire and Rescue Fund. If you want to support them, put cash in here for them, take out one of these coupons, come to the bar and buy beer. Mm -hmm. Now what that does in one quick movement, it takes what we used to think we needed 20 businesses and half a dozen charities and all local level, reduces it to one jar on the bar and printing the money. So your question about what's the smallest viable unit, one, any single business with an aspiration to social support can capitalize that project by conferring its promissory time onto that project. The body shop, for instance, used to give its staff two hours every Friday afternoon to help out, but it doesn't help out. They'd have found far better to give coupons to the charities and have that trade run. So that's our basic model. Create the money by business promise, because business promise is what people believe in. But, but hold, hold on a second. I'm, I'm trying to get my head around this. Um, the, the bar has costs to the beer. Like, like the buy, either it makes the beer that has a certain cost or it buys the beer. Um, where, yeah, these, these are, are for the markup. Mm -hmm. Cost over, it's markup over costs is the, the, the range in which community currencies can operate effectively. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you see, the, the essence of what a physical human community is, is value added by our time, knowledge, 
service interaction. Our monetary model includes import costs and export costs and taxes and all this stuff in, in the money. And no business can go 100% into a community currency because it would have a huge cash consequence. But any restaurant can say 50% cash, 50% in the community money. A grocery store might say 80% cash, 20% in the community money, right? And um, a, a street entertainer like you and myself can go 100%, right? <laughs> because, you know, uh, it's subject to tax issues, of course, because it's an income, and unless you can run but, it off. It, but staying with your exam example that, um, people would take a fiver and then give it back to the bar. So that, that actually right. puts that note immediately back out of circulation. No, it puts it into circulation. What it has done is it's given the business, you see the business can just print the money. Mm -hmm. There's a Hyman Minsky quote, uh, Hyman Minsky was a Chicago economist, but a good one, which is a very rare thing. And he said, anybody can create money. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting others to accept it. Sure. Right. <laughs> oh, really well. Yeah. Uh, that applies to businesses particularly. If a business is to print up bunches of money and say, give it to the staff instead of wages, then they're in court. There's mm -hmm. legislation about that sort of thing. If the business prints lots of money and, and puts it in the newspaper, it's treated like a discount coupon and trash. Mm -hmm. The business cannot infer value in its own tokens of promise unless it makes that real by putting the value to the charity, redeeming it. And then these bills in their till are actually money. Mm -hmm. So the business, instead of being single threaded with a cash in, cash out, cash in, cash out, continual vertical flow of money in, into the bucket, money out, gone. It's now got this other money that it puts out and it circulates in the plane of the community and returns to income. So it's so got- like The positive activity is actually the money you sort of siphoned off. It is. Charity, and then the charity does what, for example, just to- Well, the cash expense. That's what it, it needs the cash for. Charities need that, if you will yeah. remember. And so, so there are many causes in our community that just don't, don't have cash flow. And this way you can direct cash to those. But principally, the consequence is it involves this flywheel of, it's like you know, there's a playground swing and every time you go past it, you're accelerating the, the, the spin for the kids. So we can have a, a significant impact on local, um, well, this whole COVID thing and the panics people are getting into with um, monetary. They realize, hell, it's not just a supply of goods we're short on, it's a supply of money. And what do you know? The supply of money seems to be very important to everything. I mean, this this is the lesson from from Argentina and all these these big collapses that it's not just like when when you don't have money that's worth anything anymore, then then nobody can ex exchange goods and services I, even if the goods and services are there. Yeah? And although, uh, as Orlov Daniel Orlov has often said, um, this isn't a problem in Russia. Russians don't expect anything, so when the shit hits the fan, they've got stuff under the floorboards and they all know each other and there's a nudge for nudge going on because mm -hmm. networks are there. But in the Western world, the networks have been shredded by the, the nuclear economic unit. Mm -hmm. You're looking after yourself, we give you money, you spend it, that's your autonomy. So, so we defend the money and we define the choices, so it's not very autonomous. <laughs> How, how do you like in in this current situation when you when you think of um, communities really everywhere global north and global south um, beginning to seriously think how how do we avoid being quite so fragile in the future and how would we re regionalize our not initially our economy through through these kind of systems but eventually also our systems of production and consumption um, and and create more diverse regional economies. Um, one of the things that I learned from, you mentioned him earlier, Bernal Liata, um, uh, is that he always told me that the best thing would be to have an ecology of money systems. You just also, Absolutely. Uh, every, Absolutely. Business, every business needs to also still trade in the, in the national currency and only can take percentages of the local currency. So which particular models would you say um, people should look into as they're looking into creating more diverse 
local and regional currencies. And for example, the, like in, in an earlier exchange, we mentioned the Swiss Veer system, which is more an inter-business currency, and it's counter-cyclical. So if, there, if, if, if Switzerland is really doing well in the global casino game, then the Veer almost disappears. And when Switzerland has a problem, then the Veer comes back up. Um, yeah, which, which, which systems do you think are particularly? I, I'm a believer in variety. <laughs> variety in the sense of um, Ashby's laws of variety and systems theory, that um, the complexity of that which you are engaged with and your tools for engaging, those two complexities should match, variety matching. Um, it used to be you used to, sail a ship by telling the guy beside you to move the wheel but you don't fly an airplane by telling the guy beside you to move the stick you know the, the rate of complexity is different we've got an economy in a world which is totally inappropriate for a singular money now you know i don't have to argue particularly what's right or wrong about single money in some ways the conventional singular money is a very successful tool it does exactly what it does it competes it fuck out of it all. Puts us all us on the treadmill. Hallelujah. Run, run, run. Or die, die, die. So it's very successful in its way, but it leaves a big gap, which is, is that all we got? Can we also have these networks of neighborhood with, without fighting it? Don't, don't get in the way of the locomotive. Let's start these networks of interaction and exchange inside a community. And many of them, not one. It's been the biggest problem all the way through the development of let systems. It was always a plural word, by the way. Let systems from 1983 was plural. Sure. And I, we couldn't get anybody to go plural in their systems. They wanted to do one and to get it right. So they'd, and that meant that they'd set up a committee and, and a group and re, rewrite. Oh, mm -hmm. anyway, you, you've got to think about about personal money issuing in these sort of clouds. So when I spend money, it's like my, my level goes down because I'm pumping and everybody's going up a little bit. And so the whole cloud run, and then that percolates. So somebody spends, money. so think of a smoke ring, right? So your orange smoke ring, for instance, is your region. And it's got 10,000 people in it and businesses. And your trading in that is substantial and in the businesses and it's of its own nature, but there's also your locality, a thousand people. And that's another little green cloud, which is they're both in the same place. It's just sometimes you're singing green and sometimes you're singing orange. It, all of them have this resurgent recirculation effect in them, which is not controlled. So some of these are time banks in my neighborhood, a time bank of you know 20 people or a child care balancing act. So it's, it's not about having the currency, it's about having the opportunity to have as many currencies for my expression and contribution as I can deal with and play with. Well, this, is, this is a key point there, uh, and because I, I, I'm, I'm just wondering whether it takes a special sort of person no. who is kind of a, of the of the frugal type and the systemic understanding type that says well i really want to support my local community and i it all makes sense and so they have this wallet which they have like their normal currency and they have that one and then they have that one and because it, it gets a bit complicated when when i have to make the mental arithmetic of saying yeah don't, don't worry about complications don't yeah. worry about so how, how do you get around that well um i mean uh, oh dear there's so many parts in that in a way um First of all, the, the, if you have two bills, two, $10, $20, $50, whatever, you have two identical bills, and for some reason, you've made a mark on one, and that one, when you spend it, somehow or other, it will come back. This one never will. You know this one, when you spend it, it's a goner, right? Mm -hmm. This one might. Which will you spend first? The one that might come back. Uh -huh. Yeah, there you go. You made the decision. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, your 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 swipe card, your your tap and pay in your local community, will then have um, 
the ability to take what the merchant is offering as a range of six currencies. The yeah, merchant is taking the Rumaya regional, he's taking this, he's taking that, he's taking, he's taking the local Chinese festival network currency, you know, whatever, like, the, because what's not to take it? So the merchant will be open to many and it'll have a point of sale system. You'll just tap. But even in that example, the, the, the guy who he has to do the accounting of that at the end of the day might just say, that's, can we just stick with one? No, and you see, that's the trouble. If you, if you think you have to do accounting, it's because you're working in scarcity and therefore you've got to watch it. I've got to make sure the rent doesn't come due before my paycheck hits it, mm -hmm. you know, right? That, that's management of money in our singular money. In a multiple money, it's like you're sort of supported by all these little balloons that are just, and you know, the trouble with the local money isn't earning it, it's spending it. Let's try to remember that. With yeah, that. It's because, because by comparison, everybody's desperate for cash, so you offer them the local and then uh, tomorrow or whatever, there's a less urgency, no compulsion in community money, mm. compulsion in the main track. So in the spending level, it's tricky unless I know I can get 20% of my groceries with this money. I can get 50% in any restaurant with this money. It works in my consumer goods at 30, 40%. I'm getting my massages done. You know, da, 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 da. Yeah, and the, all of a sudden you see these options opening up and why not spend well, this stuff? That, no worry. In all the communities I lived in that had... Um, a let system. Um, it, it a let work. system. Remember that singular. A let system. Oh, oh. First sometimes, mistake. Sometimes it was two, but usually one of them yeah. was completely not working. But no. um, but it, it is true that that basically normally I, I don't treat myself to massages or those kind of things because they're expensive compared to like if I have to earn, not put cash on that can you euros to like I, I always look at it and I kind of go well, wait a minute I don't earn 70 euros an hour so why should I spend it yeah. right I can't afford that yeah. yes yeah so, so so but 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 it is in terms of making it operational for at that regional scale and um, it kind of yes well that is the technology and that's why we're you, you, did you ever hear about the Irish bank strike no classic in the 70s there was a bank strike in ireland in about 72 or 73 where the clearing house in the middle of somewhere dublin i guess or somewhere where all the banks cleared the checks they struck and so the banks couldn't reconcile their own local accounts they didn't know what paper was out and what so they had to close their doors so nobody could get cash now in France, this happened and it closed down France. My brother-in-law was driving to Zurich to get his pay. He had to go there to get cash to come back to buy bread, right? So France froze. The Irish, on the other hand, just started writing checks to each other. Mm. So if I had to pay you for something, I'd write a check, you mm. see? And you'd put it in your wallet, and you had a wallet that was that thick with bits of paper and all sorts of things, but you were using them to pay off other people, you see? Well, that was the first phase, and it worked, but it was stiff. The second phase of the strike, because it lasted two months, broke and then restarted. The second phase ran for about nine months, I believe. Mm -hmm. And what was happening was that certain employers were paying their, their paychecks, not in cash because they didn't have it, nobody had cash. Mm -hmm. So they had to pay them in a paycheck, but rather than make it 147 pound, they'd do five checks of 20, mm -hmm. four checks of 10, mm -hmm. And the leaders in this were the brewing industry. <laughs> it's Ireland after all. <laughs> it's Ireland after all. And it was, I, I'm asked this in Dublin when I was speaking one time and the room just went crazy for 10 minutes. Nobody would shut up. They were all chattering and raving about it because it had been the best year they'd had in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It had lower fraud and bankruptcy than any other year in that, in that cycle. And everybody had just had a great ongoing party. High liquidity, high localization, high security. When you know where you can spend it, what's the problem with taking it? So you've got to set up that, that cycle of acceptance. Why not? Mm. Why not? You know? And, and when it comes to the why not of it, 
people can drop their reservations quite easily. Now, yes, it will start with the conscious, the awake, the aware, the intent, the purposeful, the bioregionalists, the freakies, the paramounts, the permaculture people have got to be in this. Mm -hmm. um, Bill Mollison was very keen on this at one stage. In fact, he sent two people up to study it. Uh, the only people who ever came to actually study the system came from Australia. I, 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 still, I still wonder what it is that, like for example, here on Mallorca, um, Inca had the Taurine, one, one town, one of the, not the biggest, but one of the bigger towns had the Taurine, a local currency. Um, Palma still has the Palma hours, which are kind of more like the Ithaca hours, um, a time back. Are they cash backed or? Uh... No. Um, and but but all these systems are sort of people use them but it's it's really fringe it's it, yeah that's right yeah. there's no there's no bang for the buck there's no purpose in it there's no experience of benefit mm -hmm. but if you're say a small business that's trying to rebuild after a problem or a startup or just whatever and it's a question of staff and customers if you could put together something that was enthusiastically supported by the customers and the staff, why not? So, so I, I just had a, I just had a, uh, an idea that helped me think through this. Um, here in Mallorca, we, we have the problem that basically tourism just died. Um, That's not a problem. It's not a problem for the planet. Um, Gaia going, <laughs> uh, one, one, less, one less thing to worry about. Um, yeah. But at the same time, um, that's easily said on an island where 80% of the, um, the, the economy yeah. is on tourism and there are really good people looking at their children and kind of going, what am I going to do now? Um, Aren't we all? Yeah. And, and, and so some people make promises of oh we'll, we'll recover it and we'll relaunch it and all that but uh, the jury is still out on how deep this crisis will bite and how i, I don't i think we're already most people are now understanding that it will not be a bounce back we will not get to what we had before and that that's a probably a good thing um but if i now think of the future here in mallorca where the government is already talking about creating a um basic income, like yeah. unif universal basic income. Um, rather than having these people wait until the bars open again so they can be a waiter again. Um, right. If local landowners and local farmers and um, would, would basically offer people a currency to go out for two days or three days a week, spend some time in the Tramontana, build up these beautiful stone walls. There's the 20,000 kilometers of dry stone wall on Mallorca. Yeah. That's halfway around the world, three times as long as the Great Wall of China. Yeah. And they, so much to be done. And yeah, they they build over a long period of time and they take some, it's a beautiful thing to do. Um, it's hard work, but it's, it's rewarding. And how would you see a system, okay. if that could, yeah. then bought them local food, well, the, 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 way, the method that I'm recommending at this point, or drafting rather than recommending, because I haven't been talking much about it, is that governments are offering quick fixes and loans. Mm -hmm. A lot of small businesses are invited to take up loans. In Canada, you're invited to take up $30,000, $40,000 of loan with the expectation that a component will be forgivable. Oh, we'll get the rest later. Mm -hmm. Do I want to take on a $30,000 loan in my business at this point? It's going to, it's, you know, I can't pay it now. I won't be able to pay it in three years. So, so my suggestion is take the loan and then put the money in a bank account in common with 20 other businesses and use that as the backing for a standard cashback currency. Nice one. That is a good idea. It's, it's, it's just, yeah, the loans, that, the loans are available all over Europe already. So community, that's a really nice idea. Because we know that the businesses are keen on a cashback currency. I mean, even in Bristol, yeah. for instance, they say, it's no use, but we take it. Yeah. Why do they take it? Because if they don't take it, the customer goes somewhere else. So they take it yeah. and they just take it straight to the bank and get their 95 pence in the, in the pound on it. But, yeah. you know, so they don't think it's good. They just have to use it. And they're 
willing to use it because they know there's a cash backing on the full invoice, the full acceptance. Now, if you want people to just go for this and take it for granted and see it as part of the thing, then full acceptance, bing bong, mm. and the, the means of doing it, like we can do it with a, our, our software prints the money basically these days, uh, but so does any ticketing system. And you can do it all on accounts. You know, you can set up a, a swipe or a switch or a tap or and there was no trouble these days. I mean, this is one of the things that I'm really focusing on at the moment. There's two aspects to my strategy. One is essentially we're all, we could all use a money that helped us out in addition to this shit that goes through. You know, we know this stuff and we're surviving it if we can or not. Why not have this as well? Duh, right? You know, and it, it's not an acceptable argument to everybody, but it's acceptable to enough that you can generate the concept and whatever. Oh, lost, I lost my thread about the pervasiveness of this. Oh yeah, that it's gotta be unthought. It's like when you get people on a bicycle first, if they thought about getting on the bicycle, they wouldn't. I mean, it's difficult. It's obviously gonna fall over, I'll freeze hard and maybe it'll stay in a line or something. You, when they get on the bicycle and move, they get it. So they've gotta be given a currency that they don't think about but which just fits in usefully and creates circularity. Sorry. Uh, no, no, I just, I just had another thought, but then I already had the thought of why it might not work so well anymore, but it would have worked brilliantly before on the basis of what you just said. On Mallorca, we have this special thing. Actually, lots of people have these tourist tax, um, local tourist tax. Yeah? And, and, and so basically people arrive, they've paid for their hotels, but then when they arrive at the hotel, they're all asked to pay another dollar fifty or um, euro fifty. Um, that that then becomes part of what's called the eco tax, which supposedly is um, invested in sustainable things around the island. But if if they had, or if they in the future, even in the reduced tourism that we might get in the future, um, would take that money and directly put it into such a cash back fund for then a much more agile local currency, you'd multiply the money coming in um, massively. Uh, it's not just multiply; it's capture. Mm -hmm. It's like the swales, you know, if you're in a permaculture, you've got a watershed wash off. And so you build banks and you try and catch the water in those. So, well, when people talk about capturing or multipliers with conventional money, I, I just disregard that because frankly, it's like a spin dryer. The money goes around every time it's spent, it sheds through cost of goods, tax, whatever. And so money is not containable conventional money is not containable but when you have a local currency it doesn't have a multiplier effect it is a persistence effect it doesn't multiply it just is it's yeah. there yeah. It's, 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 it's slow it's spread it sink it brock bowman's water, water mantra actually works for money too uh, yes you yes stick it in place you root it and it stays yeah. there. have but, it and having it is is this is the commons of money this is free speech. This let's, is our ability to declare our money by our promise and our fulfillment. Let me run, run one thing past you. That, that it's, it's an idea that I had just after I published my book. And then for a number of reasons, because I'm, I'm not that geeky and I hate accounting and I hate bureaucracy, I, I never really pushed like pursued it, but I, I, I talked to a lot of people that I believe some of them kind of ran with part of the idea, which is great. That was the, the intention. Um, basically, the, and, and it might be flawed, but here's, here's the idea. I, I was sort of thinking, how would we, if the current monetary system is built on a zero-sum game that needs winners and losers, that, that um, needs us to exploit each other and exploit the planet for the whole thing to keep going, the whole inbuilt growth imperative in the economy and all that, how would we create money that is truly regenerative in the kind of biological, ecological regeneration kind of way and link it to like, and this is, it's going to take me about two minutes. Um, and then the, um, you, you, the thought was the following. Would it be possible to create a bioproductivity backed currency that would ultimately function to pay 
anybody who is a farmer or a forester twice, not just for what they're extracting from the land in terms of produce, timber or, or um, produce, but um, they would also be paid for being guardians of the landscape, for bringing carbon back into the ground and basically carbon sequestration the fee would ultimately, as they can demonstrate that they've been drawing down carbon successfully and regenerating land, thereby increasing a real value, then this real value would become the backing of that currency. I, I called it the regen uh, back, back, back then. And I, I believe that there's a number of people like the regen network that are now playing with something very similar, but they're doing it with, with a kind of um, blockchain yeah. back. Yeah, I, I mean, that's another conversation. I also <coughs> The tech, but yeah. think of the wheel, think of the pedals, right? Pedals in a bicycle, one and then the other. Um, the result you're looking for, um, get it the other way around. It's by the act of recirculation that you create the commonwealth where that bioregional capital can build up naturally. The, 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 the patterns of connection mm -hmm. are, that's the real thing. <laughs> right? um, I like that two yeah. and a half thousand years ago. <laughs> and it's, it's that interconnectivity and activity that lifts all those bolts. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, you can place an incentive. You can say, we're going to value this community's bioregional assets or our indigenous rights. God damn it. I've heard native groups talking about using their indigenous rights as the basis for a blockchain. <sighs> yeah, well, we're valuable, therefore we'll issue money. And then of course the money has you by the short hair, so you lose your shirt and your money. So the, the, the difficulty that people have is we'll create a money and make it an incentive for something. You've got to have the things happening that make the money the realization of that. It's a, it's a chicken egg consequence. They're not chicken and egg, there's a chick in the middle. Right? So things go three ways. It's A, B, C, right? Every, uh, I'm, I'm a great believer in triples, by the way. The yeah, right. race, yeah, yeah, and all that. Nothing in pairs. Pairs are too bio. Um, yeah. Singular is non existent. So, the, the first rational behavior is with triples. Mm -hmm. I do something for him, so they do something for you, so you do something for me. And that's clean. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm, I'm, you know, I really respect so much of what Charles Eisenstein says, but wish he would get his pattern down. Mm -hmm. Like the gift to be persistent must have a quality of acknowledgement and recording. Otherwise, pay it forward is pay it away. It just dissipates outwards. There's no patterning. The, the patterning of mutual commitment, notice I'm, I've dropped mutual credit. Mutual credit is a dangerously misconceived. It fries people's heads. Who's giving credit to whom for what? So mutual commitment, however, it's, it's the same process, plus and minus in a, in a ledger. You decide your ledgers. You associate with them. It's like a Google group bang, here's your network. So now, we've been advocating for this multiplicity of instant creation of currencies. Mm -hmm. We've got the technology for it. It's crude, but it works. It's an API, and we want to take it up through the market. Now, we realized with this business, you know, our, our paper money, that it's cheap, easy, and would be effective if we got a little bit of energy behind it. But it's also possible to go to um, a larger scale. So for instance, we're looking at a, a group called MEC in Canada, which is Mountain Equipment Co-op, which is 5 million members. And a group in the States called Recreational Equipment Initiative, uh, in, Inc., rather, which is 13 million members. And then in Britain, the John Lewis Partnership and Waitrose. Yeah. Uh, their staffing is 100,000 members of the, of the trust. So we're saying each one of those could become issuers of its own money Absolutely. and crack open the cooperative community 
which is one of the least cooperative communities I've ever dealt with. I don't know about your experience, but mm. cooperative movement is an oxymoron twice. They don't cooperate, they don't move. <laughs> but I, and I understand why. I mean, they're, they're a resistive defensive network struggling right. against the forces of rapacious capitalism. Yeah, exactly. You invite them to relax and enjoy it, and they, they don't know what that means. Right. So John Lewis Partnership, or MEC, or REI, you should be able to go to their website, and when you go to the checkout, there should be a checkout button that says, do you want 30% of this purchase to go to um, a senior's homeware, or an indigenous youth thing, or malaria nets, wherever? You know, tick the boxes. Now, it's the, the thing that I'm trying to break out in people's understanding is that that is a very good business proposition for MEC. MEC makes money hand over fist by giving away cash and validating its own currency. And the more businesses that realize that by this persistent linkaging, this connectivity, the customer staff network, particularly amongst multiple businesses, then you create this, um, this energization of what is there. You're not pumping something in to make it work. You're enabling the, the vitality and the exchanges between them. Uh, so that relates back to your, your question about the bio uh, mass, the how do we get farmers to farm effectively? You make it profitable for them to farm effectively. And that profit emerges just in the quality of their soil and their, their process and their product. Because the money works. If we try to do that with the conventional money, we're fighting ourselves all the way. It's, 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 um, it's on a slope and it goes down. Whereas if we can create this container, this resonant space where people's give and get is, it's just easy and seamless. And it's, it's inconceivable, I know. I mean, oh my God, so complicated. Many monies, my cards, my cards, and my accounts look like no problem. Two, two questions. But, but one of them, <laughs> and, and for, for, for anybody who's been listening or who's going to watch this um, when we put it out, um, who says, I want to learn more about this and I want to experiment with this in my community. Um, where would you send them as a sort of um, resource website or book to read or person's work to follow? Um, the, the first place to go is um, check out our software and try it. And um, the place I'd send for that... Um, Yeah, I've got to identify an entry point that would be effective at this point. Uh, I'll put a cover page on openmoney.cc. Openmoney.cc will give um, an entry point to whatever is current through this process. We are in the process of revising our stuff um, in a lot of ways because there's 20 years of websites in the, the dust behind us, 25 years of websites in the dust behind us, plus much more before that. I'm just trying to remember that there is, there's also, a, I think, a UK-based website, something like complementaryalternativecurrencies.co.uk, that has a huge range of, do you know which one I mean? Can you remember? CCIA, I think it's CCIA, Community Currencies in Action. It was a European-funded report. Yeah. Leonardo Binvald um, is one of the authors of that. Um, and it's it's basically... Um, see, so much money was poured into bad ideas, so much um, expert complexity, confusion. Um, you know the, the Snowden work on Kniffen, the framework of change, and uh, people brought complicated experts to satisfy government grant uh, aiders and so on, and, and you ended up with bad ideas that persisted because they were funded and had no no functional output no no product of any value um, but yet were supported for various reasons of conventional wisdom now we need an unconventional wisdom here i don't know i did you know i was just um, i don't know if it was, i was just going to korea 
to speak at a conference on basic income. Did I mention that before? Yeah, I think no, you I, an email, yeah, but you haven't mentioned it. Okay. Well, explicitly, it was out of my field, but suddenly this come to Korea mm -hmm. address this conference on. I said, I'll come, but no use for two days. I'll be jet lagged and stupid. So if you can bring me a week early and stay a week, then I can probably do a few things and you know, we'll share ideas and whatever. And they, they really gave me the red carpet. They set up a workshop with 100 government officials, currency activists and academics. That was what they said they were gonna do on the fly. Just bang, here's a three hour workshop for you to, to run. So I was very excited about that until the day before I flew, they said, don't. Mm -hmm. And that was very disappointing until I thought, damn, that's such an opportunity because if I'd gone, I would have made a mess of the presentation. My slides wouldn't have worked. I don't speak Korean. I'd have been, you know, who knows? On the other hand, if you don't go, you can put all that time and energy into telling what you would have done if you had gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I'm doing now is basically preparing um, a set of documents, um, and I will put the link to this on openmoney.cc today. It's, it's a framework that places the ideas of community currency in the logos level, the logic, the theory, the Greek level, if you like, and then moves into the, the Latin of functionality and activity, what you can do as a sort of template set. Here's a procedure which with modification can be applied at the village, the town, the city, the whatever, you know, lots of variants in there, high flexibility but it's based upon business issuing money through co-investment to support community. Mm -hmm. And that starts your turbine. Now that's the basic model. Now what are we doing with that basic model? Ah, well, what we want to do with the basic model is the sort of expression of it, the third level, is uh, a multimedia international project of information, education, and um, mutual benefit. With funding available from all over the world and focus points for the generation of basically narratives of change. It is, this sounds so much like it would actually be um, something that would be of value to that network that is still relatively fledgling at the moment that yeah, was kind of incubated out of the Capital Institute and with the work John Fullerton did on regenerative economics, you know, the, the re, it's called the Regenerative Communities Network. And it, it's basically a number of pretty capable or very capable and committed players at a regional scale saying, we want to sign up to you at this point, kind of intentional network of creating an example of a bioregional economic system. Um, and and they're, they're still finding their feet with it, but some of them are strong partners, um, like there's the sort of Hudson v Valley region, which is a very yeah, privileged yeah. region uh, yeah. that is yeah. playing with it. But then there's parts of Costa Rica and, and um, Vermont, the usual yes. of the US. Um, They've generally left themselves with the difficulty of still operating in the same model as a conventional economy with a localized level. So they're using a token currency, which is supported by a local banking or no, I mean I don't think they're even there yet but the, what you were just describing this this mechanism by which they could then engage local businesses and local charities into a wider regional regeneration network to say that we've just yeah. we've got a mechanism here where people can as they buy commit to their local region and to social and ecological regeneration in their region yeah. through this range of charities that they already resonate yeah. with um, that sounds really powerful. I mean, I'll put you in touch with Stuart Cohen to, um, because I think of course I'd yeah. love to love to chat with these people. And I, 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 you've caught the gist of it very accurately. You're, you're right on it, um, right on the money. One might say, but I, I'd return your attention to the specifics that in this portfolio of local resources, mm -hmm. there could be a whole host of um, academic, artistic individuals. You know. This person needs a year off to write a play. This person is doing this. This person needs to go and study that. And they could be equally funded what, with what I'm calling a cooperative Patreon, a co-patronage. That, that's needed. 
Didn't yeah, he? I mean, it, it's no different from Patreon, except that instead of being offered a T-shirt or, or the five or six options, and you know, all of which tend to drag down the beneficiary. You know, they end up a bit of a cost on the benefit. Yeah. Whereas if it was just you put, you know, five hundred bucks behind this guy, and you get five hundred dollars that work in these businesses. I, when, when when I finally caved um, just a, less than two weeks ago and set up my Patreon account because of this situation, just making it necessary for me to some extent. Um, I really resisted. Like I watched all these videos, how do you create your Patreon account? And it was so American and it was all about creating this incentive and hiding stuff that I normally share freely behind the paywall oh, in order to God, yeah. people to, to Withhold them. to get, yeah. withhold to get. I've got to say, nowhere has got that religion more deeply than, than the North Americans. Yeah. Nobody in Europe thinks that way, but Americans believe withhold to get. Yeah, it's, it's so, so, so basically, I, I decided to not buy into that. And all my tears that I've set up, what I'm promising people is basically what I would want to do anyway. Anyway, yeah. yeah I, if people pay a little bit more, I would like to know who that is. And I would like to give of them course. a to me. Yeah. So, so they, yeah. they, they basically just get a sort of bunch of an online council, or even if they're really high level supporters, they get, get a conversation a, a month to, to have a conversation. Uh -huh. And so you know, support that with an incentivization, which creates a persistent relationship between all yeah. the players. And it's that persistent relationship is the capital product. Yeah. And it's that capital product that produces the soil and the diversity in the local community and, and economy. So, so, so how, would you, how would you create that cooperative patron? Well, um, our initial site, and you can see this on openmoney.org slash CW, mm -hmm. openmoney.org slash CW is the, the model that we've, we, we would still argue is the way to go. Um, uh, um, but it's difficulty used to be, it needed a lot of businesses and a lot of charities. We now see a direct means of doing it one business at a time mm -hmm. uh, with benefit cash account, um, accountable benefit on the balance sheet to the business from doing this. Their accountants will love it. I've got a local CGA who's um, come out in favor of what we're doing. I mean, he doesn't agree with the business plans, but he agrees with the business legitimacy of a business issuing its own money and how it circulates back. So the the best answer would be get half a dozen businesses like a Rotary Club, members of a Rotary Club or a service group, a Chamber of Commerce, to play with the concept. And we have a game system. You can download a set of um, identities, cards, and play them out in a real-time sort of simulation in a few hours, representing several months of, of actual development. And because it's the playing that gives people the shape that allows them to understand and act. If they don't play, they'll they'll stay on the wrong side of the uh, the diving board for an awful long time. So we got to get them playing. Um, that too is play with our software because it allows you to set up a totally fictional community in a few minutes. You know, you just download a, a spreadsheet of identities into the, the accounts and bonk, there it is, and then. People can log in and play out the different roles in the thing, and you can chart it on a, a Kumu or a graphic output of some sort. But it, it's it's as immediate and urgent as I'm afraid the COVID crisis is. Um, we're way behind on development. We are underfunded. Um, uh, the materials are effective, but they need an awful lot of additional work to look as good as uh, the usual contenders. So it's a consciousness experience for anybody to understand what and why is in this for them. Um, it's best by, done by experience because people don't, like the minute you try to talk your mouth off explaining it to them, they feel somebody is selling something to them and why should I and, and uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, the, 
Uh, they have, uh, yeah, have, yeah. that's the, the process of the ego mind. We, we don't believe it until we thought of it. <laughs> so so I, I think we, we'd probably better bring this yeah. to a close, otherwise nobody will watch any of it. Exactly. Um, <laughs> that's true. I really appreciate this, uh, Daniel. Um, I gotta say I spent a long time uh, looking for this conversation and um, a lot of respect for your um, structure and design and your, your, uh, your writing, your videos, your working. I just want to see it working better. I'll, I really I'll, want to put, I'll give put my some, best. Oh, thank you. See, that's, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. And maybe, maybe we'll have in a couple of months or so have another conversation because there's one burning question that I agree we shouldn't necessarily dive into now, but it's, because it will open up another hour and a half. It's it's that whole group of um, cryptocurrencies that everybody is now inventing, and and I I just have a sense that if we wed ourselves too much on it, only works if it's on your mobile phone and if it has a yeah. huge yeah. trail of. No, it only works if it's a promise which is accountable. Mm -hmm. The only thing that makes the money work is accountability by the promising issuer and. These things are so weak. Seeds, there's a seeds group. Yeah, I was going to ask you about seeds. You like that? I like them. I like their intent. I like their the, the way they've designed it. And I don't think it's going to work very well. In fact, I've had conversations with the lead person and explained that I think he'd do better in the long run to have mutual commitment relationship, internal soft currencies, with the network between communities in a quasi token system. But to take the tokens into the community risks the failure of the community and the whole network by the failures of those communities. So I think it's a high risk proposition, good ethics, good intent. Now I can't say the same for 98% of the other cryptocurrencies out there. They've got neither good intent nor good design, they're just crap. I, I'm, at, I'm at this point with, with all these currencies uh, or these attempts is that I very much go by what I sense about the people behind them. And that's why yeah. without really having a, a strong um, technical background on this, um, I wish I could have, would have the time to take a deep dive into all these things. I know that the people who are behind Holochain are sound individuals meaning well. I know the people that are using not Holochain, but blockchain in the region network really are trying to do something of service to people and planet. <coughs> that, that the people well, the seeds are the same. Uh, so Holochain and open money tie in very nicely. Holochain is, is a great anchoring process for validating the, the sovereign identity of your monetary relationships. So it's basically the accounting back end that hooks it. We do one more of these. Um, I would love to Absolutely. ask you. So, so much, thank you so much for this time. Um, My pleasure. Really nice. I'm just going to stop recording and then we can say our goodbye.